Hi, uh, I want to first of all welcome the four C to IBM. Uh, thanks for uh, you know having the patience to hear us today, and I hope to make sure that uh, you are not sleeping. At night. That is my key strategy today here. Uh, my name is Sudish, and I'm working as a lead architect for What's Next Data Engine, uh, you know, the other What's Next uh, teams worldwide. And uh, uh, my official title is STSM, it's called a Senior Technical Staff Member. Basically, I'm a person who should survive, right? So that's a translation of that. And I have uh, Ben, uh, who is uh, technically lead for the same project, for specifically for uh, you know this uh, trust work. And uh, we are going to talk about that. that. That's one of the open source uh, that you know that uh, we have. Uh, you know, test upon it last uh, one to two years and uh, kind of really significantly contributed driving it and uh, making sure that that's, uh, that's part of our, you know, uh, main journey towards next. And uh, we have Ashin, who joined us after graduating from IIT Madras and uh, he's also working on, uh, in Presto, in a, in a uh, very similar technology within Presto, there is a flavor of uh, C++ uh, open source world. Right? So, uh, he is also doing some major contributions there. And we have a large uh, team who is working on various open sources. Uh, just to, uh, just to brief, right? So, I started with uh, Docker, OpenStack, Kubernetes. I don't know any other technology. I, I did some uh, security uh, sticks. I don't know whether you guys are familiar with that. I said structured cluttered intelligence exchange. So, one thing about uh, uh, IBM is that uh, Everybody will talk about open source, right? So, hey, do you do open source? So, we have to survive we have to do open source and just kidding. So, open source is a day-to-day -day reality, not just for IBM, anybody who is serious about this stuff, right? Uh, and just to come up with the context, and this is my personal view, not my organization's view. I believe that open source is not just uh, software related stuff. If you go back, uh, you know, if you uh, do some reading, you would realize that uh, the first human being Right, who would have um, figured out how to create fire? Right, he open sourced it. <laughs> now, if he if he did not, or he or she, right, if, he, if they did not do that open sourcing, uh, we would not have survived this long. But uh, again, there is benefit uh, in sharing this, and there are people who have then developed uh, atomic bombs and other things, and, and they can burn this uh, universe seven times or ten times. Right, so the firepower is uh, overrated. But the fun fact is that any real innovation always starts open source. Not just within software. Anywhere you go, if you see an open uh, culture and an open way of sharing stuff, that's how our species, this is my personal view, have survived differently from other species, right? So we were able to share things. If you go back to innovations, uh, uh, one of my official title is called Master Inventor. So that is also a, a way of surviving, right? So printing press was, in, in my view, I have seen a lot of uh, worldwide leaders talking about the same stuff. Printing press is uh, one of the best inventions in the world. And after that point, we were able to print and talk about solutions, right? So printing press uh, really changed how uh, we humans react to the problems uh, on the repeated issues, right? So if you really look at it, open source is our way of doing stuff. Open source is inherently in our, our genetics. So we are going to do open source this way or other way within this company or outside. Right? So this is this is our nature. So in that way, I want to thank Force for all the effort that they are doing, and uh, 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 and we also want to contribute to the same stuff. So, so uh, agenda here is uh, we will talk about Presto. Uh, and uh, we'll also talk about uh, uh, Presto as an example of how you can really significantly contribute to some open source. So there is a general answer to it. So you can actually go and talk about open sources and uh, uh, other stuff, but if you really have to um, contribute to open source, right, you need to understand what uh, Einstein said. He said that if you can explain it simply enough, you don't understand it enough. 
So that's how open source communities, in my view, at least in Presto, what we have seen so far, approaches each peer. Right? So you go and share the peer, they first ask why this peer is required. Right? They won't even, so you will come up with like, I have written my Taj Mahal in this peer, right? this is a beautiful code. They don't care about your Taj Mahal. So the ma main question that uh, they have is always, I mean, that is the main question your company and your manager will also ask you. But this is, this is like 100 people will ask you, why do we need this? Right? So if, you, uh, we, if we uh, correlate uh, our journey with the open source journey, figure out a common goal to attack, that's when it becomes successful. That's what we have seen in Presto. And Presto uh, uh, is something that, uh, so when we talk about Presto, Presto is a Java words, uh, you know, based uh, uh, engine. And SQL engine, and uh, Ashish will talk about processing. You can move to the next. Okay, so far I've seen nobody is like this. I'm successful so far. Now, uh, Presto is I'm not going to look at. So Presto is a SQL uh, engine. So SQL is a language that was formed. Database and open source actually correlate so well. The, uh, the the phenomena of open source started uh, coming into the industry like by 1960s, right? So if you look at database, what is a database? A database is something that can handle transactions in the ASCII way. And um, initially, so people created databases, and they started using databases for the purposes that, uh, for which databases were not really designed for. They even built the databases for, you know, things that was not even intended for databases. Now we even do have active databases to store the images and such that Similarity. We have reached to a point where the figuring out the innovation, what to do is next with the databases. A presto uh, comes into picture uh, when the moment uh, industry identified that um, initially when the databases were designed, you have you install a database or Android, and uh, I'm talking about the, the traditional databases. It comes up with the embedded storage. So if you want more storage, you have to buy them from or installation licenses, okay? So it was getting limited. So that's when the industry went to the data lakes. Uh, and uh, believe me, this is an explanation that I have to give you for two hours and try to reduce it in such a way that they also get their chances to make you, you know, not sleep. So uh, data lakes are nothing but you can send all your, uh, you know, non-traditional uh, data such as like files, videos, and images, and then uh, you can index it and search. But then, what was missing was, in uh, so if, if you would have seen like five years before or something, uh, there's a sites like Netflix, if you go and sometimes when you try to start a movie, you won't. When you refresh, it will come back. Why? Because that their transactions were not really, you know, holding as it. And that's why uh, the uh, technologies like Hive came into picture. Believe me, all of these are open sources, right? And uh, and then we came into something called data lakes uh, with uh, acid properties on time travel on. So these are, this we could call something like a new generation database. And uh, it had this problem of not able to talk to the traditional databases. And that's when we figured out a new, you know, architecture pattern called uh, lake house. And in this case, it is called data lake house. It can talk to uh, the traditional databases like Oracle, it can talk to high based you know, uh, the non-traditional databases. And same SQL query can be sent to both. Right? 2012, a few people started a Java project called Presto. 2012 or 2011, I, I don't remember exactly. And uh, it, uh, after that point, a lot of people started using this, a lot of companies. And then uh, I, I think at least the four or five Prestos are there, open source. Something like three now. So many companies wanted their own open source. And Presto is still out there, and that's where IBM is actually uh, working with this Presto community, trying to uh, you know make use of the open source journey for IBM as well as for the company. Uh, so uh, uh, Presto is, as I said, it's a SQL engine, which means we all know select start from employee, right? It's the first uh, uh, SQL that we would have all tried in our graduation days. So it goes to a code, and that code understand which table you are trying to select to start from. And it, it will see whether legally this index is correct first. And then it will um, go and 
talk to employee, it is nothing but as a data that is stored in this <coughs> ultimately. So uh, that is done in a piece of code called engine. It's actually a complicated architecture where this execution. So identifying the this, uh, file, whether the parser is working fine, the SQL is uh, in character syntax and everything is a common issue. That is abstracted as something called coordinator. But the actual execution happens in something called worker. Right? And it has uh, something called, uh, you know, uh, it has uh, two types of workers, one is Java and one is C++. So uh, here is where I will welcome Ben. He has, he is the first uh, contributor to Presto from IBM Kochi. So I want to welcome him and, uh, you know, uh, explain the journey as well as uh, and probably share uh, thoughts about uh, Presto. So, uh, as Sudish mentioned, uh, Presto Engine is a uh, SQL query engine uh, which is used for interacting with uh, massive data sets. So, uh, it's uh, a easy to handle uh, large volume of data, like petabytes of data, makes it more uh, applicable for different organizations world. So, uh, as Sudish mentioned, our uh, journey with Presto is actually that project. So, where we need to handle a uh, large volume of data uh, with, with, from different data sources. Uh, so the traditional SQL tools which you are familiar with were uh, not applicable in this context. So in this context, uh, Presto came into picture and uh, it became a perfect fit. So uh, at that time we don't have any idea about Presto is uh, and uh, what we are done is like we plan to explore uh, more about Presto. So uh, we went to the community documentation uh, tutorials, uh, we went to the community forums etc. and uh, tried to learn more about Presto. So as uh, uh, we gained more experience and uh, we got more knowledge about Presto, we had an urge to uh, send something back to the community. So uh, we have identified certain areas and uh, discovered these areas where we can contribute to the community as well. So one of the first contribution like this is, uh, as I mentioned in the first call, is like uh, we had, uh, added one new keyword to Presto, which is a fetch, pass, and rows only. So this is something uh, similar to the limit keyword you guys might already know. So as Rich mentioned, we can have a select star from something, we can put a limit there. So fetch first trend rows only uh, will do a similar job. But the difference is this particular keyword is ANSI SQL compatible, American National Standard Institute. Uh, this is this compatible is there. So what ANSI SQL compatible is like, it will be supported for all the databases uh, which is supporting uh, Presto, sorry not Presto, uh, ANSI SQL compatible. So, it is more uh, reliable and portable. So what, something which is written in one query can be ported to different databases. It will work in other databases as well. So suppose we take a, a non ansi SQL, something like a limit. So it will work in uh, MySQL, but it won't work in uh, something like uh, Microsoft SQL server. So, so uh, this is the uh, importance of this. So uh, we uh, developed this and uh, we got it tested working. So the next step was to contribute this to the community. So contributing something uh, is a prerequisite, you can say that as the last point. Uh, we need to have an account in jitter.com. Also, we need to create a ticket and uh, press the open source community detailing what all things, uh, which particular issue or bug fix uh, uh, we are intended to contribute. And we need to uh, provide the adequate details for it. And uh, internally, if you are working in an organization, we need to have a proper internal approval from that organization as well. So also we have something like a CLA. So we have two types of CLA. One is the ECLA. If you are working from an organization, you are contributing through something we have done. So we need to have a contributor license agreement, ECLA. So if you are going as an individual contributor, you got something like an ICLA. So and the next mandate, uh, Presto is doing is like uh, we or the PR should have only one commit. So if you have done multiple commits, what we can do is like we can squash and put it as a single commit. So the last point, uh, as already know, we need to have proper documentation, unit testing, everything. And so uh, talking about our journey, so when we prepared, the, when we plan to prepare the PR, uh, Sudhish is our spoke to the Presto community from IBM side. So we have started interacting with uh, the uh, Presto community and we have created a, a ticket there. And uh, we have completed all the internal approvals from IBM. IBM always approves, uh, supports the Presto, uh, sorry, open source community contribution. 
and uh, we got our ECLA approved and uh, we are submitted out here. As the teacher already mentioned, the first question was, what's the use of this? And uh, we have explained them, this is uh, something like this and we got a physical compatibility. And uh, uh, they were happy and they approved our PR and uh, it was uh, released in the 0 0.280 version of Presto in May 2020. So talking about my experience, uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty good and uh, I always want to tell each and every one of you if you are uh, going for open source community contribution that is something worth uh, doing in your life. And also uh, apart from this we have done uh, certain uh, vulnerability fixes, we added certain plugins as well as part of ABM to the next open source community. And uh, if any one of you, uh, quick question. So you, so this is not a proper SQL database. It is a SQL uh, database, but it is not a database. It's basically you can connect to any databases underneath. Like for example, we have MySQL. If you have Oracle, and if you have let's say Hive, so all are databases. You send a query, which can join all the tables between. It can act like a single database if you have only one database or not. But that's the, not the motivation behind things like first so It's basically, I would call it like a SQL engine, which can be connected to multiple databases. So if I'm not right, this basically takes the query, converts, like optimizes it and converts it into bytecode, run, and then gives it to the virtual machine that has to run it on the database. Uh, not exactly. Yeah, so I, so, if, if you can, you can actually, so we can have a good uh, Q and A, I think. It's, yeah, sure, sure. Come sure. To that. Yeah. Because there is one more, uh, you know, uh, yes. what sure. everyone yes. has, it's also a significant part of our um, journey. I'll just complete my part. So if uh, some of you want to uh, take a look on Presto from the community, so everything is uh, available. So everything is available in the Presto documentation. So I put in the last one, like uh, the Presto's official website, presto.db.io. We got a documentation for uh, what can what we need to do in order to run our Presto in our uh, local machine. So it's a Maven-based project, which is developed in Java 1.8. So you can uh, simply clone the project from github.com uh, of uh, Presto. And after that, uh, we can, the community is recommending the IDE, which is IntelliJ IDEA. So we can do the proper configurations uh, as we shared, we can connect to different types of databases. So if you've got a MySQL database or a, uh, any of the Postgres or something like uh, uh, using Iceberg connector, we can uh, connect to file-based system databases and all. So we can uh, do the configuration to them and uh, we can connect to database and do proper query. We can do cross catalog, like we can do cross DB query, we can do cross schema query in So this is something special, we can try out uh, as per the documentation which is available. So with this I am uh, pausing here and uh, handing the stage to Ashwin. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks for the for setting the stage. Uh, and uh, hi everyone, it's good to see all of you here. Uh, so I'll try to keep this brief because I can see uh, people are getting restless and have a lot of questions. So uh, now as uh, Sudeshan Pender said, Presto is an SQL engine on a database uh, and it is primarily java based so it runs on a jvm uh, now the thing is when you are running queries in sql i don't know how many of you have had to do something like data analytics or an opportunity to do it uh, but uh, when you are running your know, long interactive queries or large workloads you want to do some serious data analysis depending on the type of uh, query that you're running it might get over a few seconds a few minutes or you know, if you're unlucky, it might take a few hours, yeah. And uh, you release, and, and, and that's basically it hampers your productivity, right? You want to run as quickly, you want them as quick as possible. If it's a long query, you want to run more of them. If it's an if it's an hour, can you find down to half an hour? If it's five, can you find down to two? So uh, the solution to that that the Presto community came up with is uh, Prestissimo, which is the uh, C plus implementation of Presto or rather the C++ implementation of the Presto worker. And the advantage, you know, is obvious. You don't have the JVM, there is no overhead. Uh, and because it's C++, you can uh, optimize much more effectively, right? Uh, so let's move on to the next slide. Yeah, so this is basically a rough diagram of 
where uh, Presto comes into the picture. So uh, there was an architecture diagram of Presto with the Ashton idea. I don't know what kind of community you had a chance to look at it. Uh, but uh, Presto is a distributed engine, right? There is uh, one coordinator and then there are a bunch of workers. So the SQL query goes to the coordinator. Uh, the coordinator creates a query plan. It passes the query, it creates a query plan, and then passes it passes the uh, plan down to the workers, which actually do the execution. And uh, this is where the bottleneck is because the workers are down, and there is extensive computation, you know, filtering, drawings, sorting, whatever. It might take a really long time. So we uh, cut out the JVM, cut out Java, and put in a C++ implementation of the worker. And the idea is that uh, your query should run much, much faster. And uh, finally, we are able to get, uh, at least in the community, we are able to get uh, benchmarks uh, of up to 2 to 10x improvement, depending on the type of query. You know, if it's uh, data bound or uh, computation bound. So maybe we can go to the next slide. Right, so at the heart of uh, STSIMO is a uh, execution engine called VLOX. So, Again, uh, because I'm not time, I'm not going into too much detail. Uh, but this is sort of what I mentioned earlier, right? There is a language front end which is SQL uh, that gets optimized by the Presto coordinator, changed into a query plan, and finally the actual execution is done by this Vlox uh, layer, which is essentially the, the Presto is essentially Vlox, right? Uh, the actual computation all has as it's all done within Vlox. Um, as to, so what exactly it, it does is that it tries to, uh, uh, so it can, it can query various data sources, like uh, Hive, for example, is the only one that's supported at the moment. This is an active developer, so uh, many things are happening. Uh, maybe some of you might, have, might, might also be interested to contribute, I don't know. Uh, it can query different types of file formats, it provides support for um, SQL operations like, you know, joins, filters, sorting, whatever, all the things I mentioned earlier. And uh, also for SQL functions, you know, simple functions like sum and count or complex functions like CDF and so on. Uh, there's a really good paper by uh, uh, Meta on this, they are the ones who sort of spearheaded the development of uh, Presto and now the CC1 Velox. Uh, and there's also a small uh, blog post that I have linked down here. I don't know if uh, you guys can uh, want more details, you can go through this and uh, have a look. Um, so let's move on to the next one. Right, so I'll just briefly talk about uh, our experience uh, working with uh, Prestissimo and uh, open source. So, uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, these SQL functions right, are all implemented in Vlox. So, uh, a lot of functionality that is there in Presto is not currently there in Presto because again it's under active development. Um, so, when we started integrating Presto and Presto into our products, we saw, uh, you know, we noticed uh, a gap and uh, we thought we should try to get familiar with the product, uh, try to contribute back to the community and uh, the ideal way to do so, the ideal way to get started with contributing to a community would be something small, right? Take a bug, make a fix, uh, write some documentation for it. In case of Vlogs, because there was still so much left to do, right? We decided to pick up an SQL function, a few SQL functions, right? That we could uh, sort of contribute to. And uh, yeah, so I, I think finally we ended up contributing the three SQL functions. Uh, the, I already talked about the process, so I will not go into too much detail there. But uh, I'll briefly mention how we uh, uh, sort of got to it. So, I think that's it. Okay. Uh, so, first, when you contribute to this, this community, you should. Uh, is to, is to figure out how to you know look at the code, figure out where we can make the change. And in Velox, it was actually pretty easy because uh, they had uh, extremely good documentation. And uh, recently, I came across this company called Nana. So we had uh, we were able to talk to these members of the community, right, and uh, get their feedback and uh, really figure out how to make contribution to short term. So I think I end here. Uh, I'm sort of running out of words. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks. I guess. Uh, 
Yes, I don't know what Ashin said, right? So our ex experience so far with various open sources is that if you really want to seriously contribute, you need to understand the governance process of the community, right? And so just to give an example, if you if you so if you have to cross the gate today and come here, that security your heart should allow you to get in. But the governance process has identified you as the host members, right? And then you have access to enter here. So that kind of governance process is laid out for all the open source communities. And Presto specifically has a very matured governance process in identifying as a good contributor. Once you get through the gates of that contribution, you can actually work towards becoming a, uh, you know, a working group member. So I'm a working security and governance working group member for uh, Presto. So if you are raising a PR on security or you know, you know, uh, governance or security or qualification or anything, that sort of, uh, it is going to come to me as well to review the PR. And uh, then you can work towards to become an official committee or a board owner. And then they do have a you know steering group. So steer, in order to be uh, really steer the strategy of the community, you need to be part of the steering group. There is voting and other things. So that's the general nature of how Presto runs the things. They have a very matured governance process that really motivated uh, enterprises like I did. Right? That's one reason why Meta is still continuing Presto. So uh, if, if I personally think that if you really have to contribute to any open source, you need to understand the, or inner source also within your company or organization, you need to understand the governance process. Who called the shots and who decided the strategy? You need to have a view on this and then you can actually impart it. And Presto, we believe that uh, it has the right essence of extensibility because it has something called plugin architecture. And so I know, so we know he's sitting here, he has developed some uh, you know, plugin that we have used, uh, or, or at least he has consumed a ranger plugin which we have used in our SaaS implementation. So anything that we looked at, we either see in Presto or people have already tried to develop such a thing, like in plugin. And you can write your own plugin. So that enables the extensibility, you know, part of it and the maturity of the governance process. That is very important. So these two things uh, uh, always matters and in Presto we so in our while embarking on journey we have seen that these two dimensions are very strong in Presto. Presto is seeing only all sorts of uh, uh, in that group or whatever they are doing it is quite well mature. And uh, technology wise it is C plus uh, plus Java and they have the DevOps related areas where you can contribute. Documentation. Uh, there are so many ways you can contribute as a manager as well. Right? So you can they have Presto meetups within India worldwide and other stuff. So matches a lot of what uh, four six group. So that's all I think uh, we can take questions and uh, thanks for not being so, Yeah, so I had a question. So you <laughs> said, let me get to the mic. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, I think Dude, I you know, audio, audio wouldn't audio come into the live stream now. Where's the mic? There's one more mic now. Yeah, let them repeat it. Let them repeat it. Let them repeat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. So, so uh, you said that you know, frustration is the engine kind of thing. So, from what I understand, it's like single query, multiple DB. Okay, fine. Multiple DB kind of setup, right? Like, we use write a sing single query, it runs on, maybe it runs on multiple queries, maybe it gets data from multiple DBs kind of thing. I don't write a you know simple ORM or a parser like that. I mean, why go to all this ORM? Setting up a huge Java-based application and Z plus 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 and all those things. I just not use a Python script to do it. Enterprise. Yeah, that is that's a pseudo kind of way of. I just like to explain. That's a good question, by the way. Right? So uh, I will laugh at that question because that uh, uh, see we, we can write a parser. So basically, if you look at any query, right, there are four stages. So it parses, it even first identifies the identity, and then it does the lexical analysis and parsing, and then it does the optimization, as you mentioned, right? And then it executes. So all these four stages can be done in a single node. Right? If you download Presto, in IntelliJ, you can right now boot it, configure it, and run. So that works. So if your employee table has 100 nodes, it will work. And if you have only Let's say Mac machine with a lot of difficulty if you want to get to work. But uh, the scenarios where um, Netflix, they needed 10,000 nodes. So why did not they consider the traditional databases uh, step forward is that, okay, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't want to take any names, but there are databases which perform extremely well, right? 
you keep adding, you keep adding, you check your first whether you still have money to add notes. Yeah, that's one thing. You keep on checking that. But after some point in time, 10,000 uh, 1, notes, can you add? We may not be able to support that, right? Because the engine, is the logic which you mentioned, right? The source code. That's not all about it. It's about the storage where you keep it. And uh, it's like you just want the icky space, but you end up in buying the entire car, right? Because if you look at it. And now you have to park the car also. Because you need the parking space for the 10,000 cars. All you wanted is a storage space. And only four people are traveling, but you have the you know, endless requirement of keeping is all this, uh, you know, the Netflix stuff uh, into some space. So that's when industry started thinking about not the traditional databases and not some code, right? But a place where you can scale your logic and engine, which you mentioned is called engine traditionally. That logic or the code, whatever it is, separately you can keep on scaling if it is processing and then add storage. And that's why we, uh, we look into opportunities like uh, Presto. Where Presto, you can keep adding Presto workers. So Ashin beautifully put it, right? So it's a distributed SQL engine. So it essentially means that the execution is happening at some place. It is a separate code. And the parsing and lexical analysis, identification of identity all is a separate code. That's called coordinator. And coordinator decides the planning. Coordinator does the optimization. We have even done some innovation in the optimization that you don't need first optimization, but externalize the optimization. All those things can happen in coordinator. And then you can send to the worker notes. You can keep adding worker notes. You can keep adding the, uh, the object source. So it really fits your purpose. If you are simply hosting an application, which is just going to cater like 10 to 100 users or maybe 1,000 users, a laptop is enough. I think when I started the, my career, this laptop would be qualified to be a big server. Right? So now if you look at from that perspective, it could host such a workload. But then if you want to attack the enterprise workloads, you definitely will need to scale. And that's where you want to cross the boundaries of uh, you know, licensing like the traditional analysis, which has the limits of, you know, we can only allow you a thousand months, and after that there are problems. So that's the Presto like open architecture engines where you can keep adding your own storage and you can keep extending, you know, you can just add one more machine and the code becomes faster without affecting anything else in the code, right? And then I take Like, hey, scaling it up without, I mean, I feel like that kind of, you know, like, uh, how, do you, how do I put it? Like the un unintuitive way of just scaling up and makes it makes everything work. Why, you know? I, yeah. So there is a benefit. Like that, right? Like there you have ten thousand nodes and ten thousand nodes. A single node means a single server, right? Like, right? Or is it? Yeah, I, I'll give an out of the context example. So when we go towards innovation, we have to go out of slightly out of the context. So if you have to travel today, and then if you think that you go to the other market and buy. And build the tire versus you buying a you know bike which is reusable, which has its own consistency already proven, all the asset properties for the vehicle, and also it has a particular service. You won't even you don't even want to talk to the company, right? So you will talk to the dealer, and you have the offers by the way. It's a debate over the scale offer or if they're trying to you know attract you. But by the way, you will have the solution out there. Will this work? It works. Cycle would work. <laughs> so, uh, you have a point. I agree with that. But uh, the, the, the point of yeah, putting... I get your point though. I get your point though. But it's like... And the flexing like, area. Yeah. Yeah. Ask you like, uh, for like a data analytics point of view, yeah, it works. Like, it, it will work very well because like, you will use multiple type of data based current. That's so, right. Yeah. So, 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 main so, works, main types types work, work, not, not just OTAP. Yeah. Yeah. Or OTAP. But uh, you could still use it's a mixture of like So basically, you can have the data warehouses type of workloads versus you can also have a data mix. But actually, it's a mix. And you can also use it as a individually dependent database and have it in the like, way. Uh, any case studies that like, companies that are using this in particular case? For example, what does Meta do? Yes. <laughs> Meta, so. I don't want to disclose what they are using, but uh, I know that they are running a Presto cluster of like uh, 10,000 or maybe more. Okay. And none of the traditional databases out there are going to scale like that. I mean, it's not about support. They are not basically because they need to add more storage. 